Welcome to this guide to 3D printing at the RS Design Spark Barclays Eagle Lab Cardiff. In this video, we're going to cover the very basics of 3D printing and how you can achieve the very best from your use of the facilities in Brunel House. We are located at the very doorstep of Queen Street Railway Station Cardiff, where the labs are open during normal working hours to the public. There are no membership fees involved, just a modest hourly rate for the use of the printers and a small charge for any materials consumed. This can normally be assumed to be pennies, so long as you don't decide to build solid house bricks. Early 3D printing developments may be plotted back to the 1980s, with the development of rapid prototyping and stereolithography. But it's more likely that Dr. Adrian Boyer's Rapid Replication Prototype Project, RepRap for short, was more responsible for bringing 3D to public attention. It described an ambitious, low-cost, open-source design that became widespread in the early maker community. The chassis precision was achieved by using threaded rod and stepper motors used in three axes to precisely control the position of a heated printer head that accurately extruded a plastic filament onto a hot plate. In a wonderfully reflexive demonstration of the technology, the first item ever printed on a new printer will be the components necessary to build yet another copy of the printer itself. More recent versions have replaced the plastic filament with metal, chocolate or concrete. These days, 3D printers have been developed that can even produce human body parts. Apart from copying or downloading pre-made files, there are two general methods of generating your own printable objects. The first is to scan an existing model. This may be carried out in several ways, and the lab has a hand scanner that can quickly produce a reasonable artifact in electronic form. Alternatively, you can design your own object in a 3D design application. The main advantage is that the output from these packages is far more accurate and well-defined than any scanned object. There are a number of excellent 3D design tools, and as the way of many things today, may be free to download and use. As with graphics programs that easily export in a number of popular formats such as GIF, JPEG and PNG, 3G software should export in a similarly convenient format such as STL, OBJ, X3D and XMF. Others exist, but these are the most common brought to the lab for processing. The lab currently has three 3D printers, two Ultimaker 2 single filament machines and an Ultimaker 3 dual head machine. The advantage of the dual head is that two filaments may be combined to print more complex objects. Prearrange a convenient time and either bring your own design on a USB device or make it available in the cloud. The software used in the lab is Ultimaker's Cura, that again is available for free download. Part of the package's function is to import your object and prepare it for printing. Like a standard printer, quality options exist to either produce the equivalent of a draft quality version right through to the highest definition copy, the difference being the time taken to print. The 3D printer could be seen as a standard printer, but the printing head is raised to deposit further and further layers of ink until the total object is formed. The more layers and the thickness of the layers defines how well the object is built and, of course, how much time the printing takes. There are some other things to consider in 3D printing. The letters I, J, K, O, Q, V, W, X and Y, as each new layer printed, is formed on an existing layer. The letter T can cause problems, as after the main stem is printed, the printing head has the problem of producing the bar of the T as this is left hanging in free space with no support. There are obvious techniques around this problem. One is to print temporary support columns that will be removed after printing, but perhaps more easily the T could be printed upside down or on its side. This deals with the problem of overhang. We have said that the printing filament, which comes in a wide range of single coloured reels, is relatively cheap but it's still good practice to save time and weight by modifying the infill of any object. This means replacing the internal and therefore unseen solid centre with a honeycomb structure. The Cura software can be programmed with all of the options to control how this infill is structured in a very simple manner. It's important to note that designers do not need to design the infill. This is a function of the printing software. Designing and printing a good 3D object is not complex, but will benefit enormously from an experienced helping hand. In the Cardiff lab, Ash has more than just the usual experience. He's the additional knowledge provided by the fact that he's one of the few people to have constructed his own 3D printer, so long ago that our archive images are all in sepia. What printer have you made yourself? 
Uh, my first printer was a, a Vector 3 by Eagle Moss, which was a magazine subscription that took 90 weeks to complete. And the the print size was like 12.5 by 12.5 by 13 centimeters. Uh, my new printer, Creality CR10, can print bigger than the entirety of the old machine. So my old machine would fit on the print bed in my current one. Plug into the labs, plot your own route, and arrange a visit to take advantage of his guidance and advice. 